remember a fella coming in the middle of the road, machine gun, doo, 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 doo. bouncers being hit straight in the head, standing next to me. I just remember all the little youngsters like standing over his body, jumping over the bar. So like round my ways, we had a lot of gang activity. We had like G Street, Old Tree One, Hotspot. It was absolutely crazy going back to like 2002 all the way to, to the present. Now, I've nearly, been, I've nearly been shot about 20 times. My brother got shot in front of me five times. Um, I've had a bouncer shot in his head while he was standing next to me. This is all on the same road on Wandsworth Road. I came from Peckham, you understand? So coming from Jamaica, at the young age I was, you understand, started school in year eight when I came over. And from then I moved to Peckham and Growing up in Peckham, meeting friends in the sun, where I came from, I wouldn't say I came from a, a, a poverty place or anything like that in the sun, because obviously I had a good family in the sun. My dad was kind of kind of the same thing on the roads. Do you know, do you know what's crazy? My dad's been in prison the majority of my life. But one, one thing I'll say, like, I've never gone without, you know, like birthdays, Christmases, mm. I've always had everything I wanted. But it's only as a molder, it's my dad I needed. I didn't need gifts. I needed yeah, my dad yeah. being there, you know? For school, for me, um, I found it difficult. I, I, I was a guy with no confidence. So I was always that quiet kid in class. And if someone was to make a joke of me, I'd absolutely go mental. So I remember um, we was playing for a football team and uh, no one didn't really like the football manager. And um, someone's done the football manager in the back of the head with something. And that is the first time I've ever been nicked for anything. So I got nicked for GBH when I was 14 years old. I got took to Ballum Youth Court. And um, there's a few witnesses there, innit? They, so they said that it wasn't me who'd done yeah. it. So um, that was my first ever thing I got nicked for. And obviously they found me not guilty. Um, after that, I started selling drugs. I got nicked when I was... I got nicked for a few times for like £10 and £20 draws here and there. It's not until I got to 18, I got nicked for a robbery in Streatham, cash in transit. I remember this guy into the train station to fill up the cash machine. I followed him in there and then I just grabbed the cassette. But this year, do you remember when like the London tube bombings yeah, were going yeah. off the buses? Yeah. All the tra train stations were on high alert. So as I grabbed the cassette, there's already armed police in this train station in Streatham. I've grabbed it, looks, so I was like, oh my God. I've had to throw the cassette back at the police, run, got to the getaway vehicle, my driver wasn't in the car. He was on the other side of the road having a piss. So I've had to keep, I run straight past the car, got nicked at the end of the road behind Caesars in Streatham. Yeah, yeah, that long road yeah, there, yeah. I got nicked at the end of the road. Yeah, for so. me, for me, like, I got arrested for um, Robbie when I was in school. And then there was a group of us and someone obviously robbed someone. And because of what I was wearing, I was distinctive, you know what I'm saying? I wouldn't say I don't know what was going on. I used to sell weed here and there, you know what I'm saying? But it was, not until my mum, you know, she didn't realise what was going on. So for me, I think I was about, what, 13, 14? From drugs to knife, from knife to guns, you know, something. Mm -hmm. It was actually crazy because it become a thing like, we wasn't actually out there trying to put people down or, you know, something to hurt people, but we was more the defenders instead of the oppressors, mm -hmm. you know, something. So we wasn't, go like, my, some of my friends, they'll rob people, whatever. But then we had to deal with the backlash, you know, something yeah. so it was it was kind of hectic. The life that man's always involved in shooting, stabbings, uh, it was crazy. I actually enjoyed it. I used to sit in my front room, I used to do like, I'd get a box of weed and pull it all in 10 pound and 20 pound drawers. And I'd watch like a box set. I remember watching Lord of the Rings, the trilogy. Yeah. I sat there for the whole day, watching the whole thing, just bagging up weed. I used to enjoy it. I used to have two gates on my door, on my house. I have one there, then my door, and then like a meter behind to have another gate. So when people come up and just open the door, yeah, yeah, they can't yeah. get that. I remember my house getting raided one time and I, the police have got the angle grinder. I was like, oh God. So I've opened the door, I was like, right mate. And I shut it again, cause I know they've got to get through that door, that door and that door. But then, this time I'm just putting everything down the toilet and stuff and that, you know. I was in a little pub on Wandsworth Road. This is the same place where my brother got shot, um, standing outside. I remember a fella coming in the middle of the road, machine gun, doo, 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 doo. bouncers being hit straight in the head, standing next to me. I just remember all the little youngsters like standing over his body, jumping over the bar. And you know, it's mad, 
these things started getting, they was happening regular. So when I hear that someone's died now, I'm like, oh, okay. Like, it, it's, it's, just, it's coming like it's normal for me, you know? Yeah. Um, that, that's probably the worst thing I've witnessed other than that, my brother being shot and I had to cover up all the holes on his back and stuff. It looks like in the daylight. Yeah, so that, that one was in the evening. We used to have a pub there called the SW8 bar. It's the same place where my brother got shot. They pulled up on a motorbike. Bap, 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 bap. He got hit five times. My other pal got hit five times. The thing is, I was standing right in front of them. So they're behind me. So I was only skinny at the time. So if I got hit with them five, I'm going to be dead. Because my, my brother was about 17 stone at the time. So he, he took all the shots from hitting me. I remember getting to the bottom of this little ramp. I'm already on the phone to the ambulance because I think my brother's dead. I mean, like, yeah, my brother's dead. Can you come and pick him up? Like, I, I wasn't even thinking. That's all I said. And I put the phone down. I said where he was, SW8 bar, put the phone down. I remember the motorbike drove off. Then I run back up the hill, pulled my brother's clothes off, started covering up the holes. Arm um, police come, then the ambulance come. Um, I knew my brother was all right when he said, oh, can you take the money out of my pocket? Because he had a couple quid in his pocket. So I knew he was going to be all right, and he was, I think he was in hospital for about a week. Yeah, for me, I'm not going to lie, like, when I was in active involved, like, I, don't, I didn't care. For as long as I got my machine, I didn't care. You know what I'm saying? To then getting links, buying big, you know what Big machine yes. guns and that, then having things with silences and that. It was, it was just kind of, like, for me, it was just like, right, like, did you see this on TV? Did you excite, you said yeah, excited, yeah, didn't it? It was just like, yeah, it's exciting mm. and that, but like I said, the times in the sun that people are getting and what them kind of things doing in the sun, it's crazy because it's always something like this, yeah? You might go for someone and trying to shoot after this person could be the other person, the innocent person, end up getting, you know what I'm saying to you? And that's how, it was, that's how mad it is. Like, all of my friends were doing like 30 wrecks and that. I'm not saying it is them, I don't know who done it or whatever, but it was someone who was nothing to do with any gangs or any estate, it's always like a random person getting hit. Was there anything you would never do crime-wise? Was there a limit? No. There was no limit. I don't think there was I no mean, limit. There was no limit. Um, there was no one telling me no. Um, I remember getting out of the car, stuck the gun to the geezer's head, you know, just to get the cash cassette yeah, off him. Yeah. I'm thinking he's just going to give it up. Like, they're insured for this money. I stuck the gun to him. My man has swung a punch from me. So I've had to round it and I've gone back to him about eight times. But you know when like you've got tunnel vision, you don't realise how much times you've hit someone. I've knocked all these geezer's teeth out and he's laid out on the floor. So that one's kind of stuck with me because I just remember like bits of blood just coming out every time I hit him. So that, that's, what I went, that's actually what I went to prison for, what I received the 17 years for. Marlon, what did get you into prison? What was, what was the one? When I got into prison? Yeah, which one did? Um, the firearms, when I got nicked, um, basically they find a car full of stash of firearms and that went on the news and then they started, I, I was on the run for like three months, you understand? Know, yeah, this is the day I got arrested. As we were driving, he's following my instructions, so I said, take the right, he took the right, take the left quick, you know what I'm saying? So then a car come and I'm like, right, but as I'm watching everything in the mirror, I'm watching everything in the mirror, you know, so I'm, I'm like, something, like, this is it, you know what I'm saying? We're driving and then, then the bike came. I said, no, nah, that, that bike's following us. And I said, it was a CBR 1000. And he's like, no, nah, man, he's not following us. It's some red bike. And I said, take the right. So as he's taking the right, yeah, at the traffic light, you know what I'm saying to you? You can't go left, you know what I'm saying to you? So I said to him, turn, you know what I'm saying? So he's turned back to the main road. So as he turned, the bike stopped, you know what I'm saying? Like, they stopped, they couldn't turn. So you I said, yeah. eye contact? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I said, yeah, definitely. So as we're driving, other cars are coming, and something. So I'm still, I'm still attempting to drive, you know. We got round to Ellsbury Estate, near E Street Market. So I said to myself, I can jump out the car now and run into the market, and I'm it, gone. Yeah. So I said, no, I don't want to, I don't want to run. So I said, I want to know what they got on me. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm saying, if, if, they can, if I can fight the case, I'll fight the case. And I stayed in the car. All I can see is three cars back to back, just, you know, coming fast. I'm saying, right, I can see the hats on as well. And I'm saying, okay. So they jumped out and I shot the tires out. And I'm just sitting in the van. They shot the tires out? Yeah, I shot the tires out. I'm sitting in the van and I'm like, I'm like this. We have done already did what I need to do with my bridging phone. So I'm saying, rah. They said, ah, open the door. I said, I'm not touching nothing. You know what I'm saying? I said, I'm not opening up no door. So they're trying to smash the window. My window wouldn't smash. So they smashed my friend's window, dragged him out. You know what I'm saying to you? Then after that, they opened my door, dragged me out. 
and that was it. So when I got arrested, it's like, they wanted to shoot, man, in a sense. And it's not even a joke. That's why I didn't, that's why I said That was myself, their excuse, when yeah, they yeah, need to bust yeah, the window. Yeah, because obviously, because of the seriousness of the um, thing that I got arrested for, because there was like four guns in it at the time. And I can't remember how much um, sh bullets there was. There was loads though. And there was drugs in the car as well. So they wasn't even caring about anything else apart from, yeah, we've got him, we've got him. Uh, prison for me, um, if we're going all the way back to like Felton days, like 2005, I remember landing on induction wing. And I remember there's this fella there, he's just looking at me, I was thinking, what does this guy want? Anyway, it's gone like three days. And this guy, I heard, overheard him talking. He's like, well, that's, that's my man's brother. We've ended up having a fight over the pool table. Um, that was my first like fight in prison. And then from Felton, went to Portland where it was a bit bit rough like I had a yeah, fight that, yeah. I had a couple fights in Portland that was probably the roughest job was a YO I remember some fella stabbed me on free floor ended up having a little this uh, little fight fell on the floor of each other got stopped went blocking all of that um, it's not until when adult prisons where it started getting a lot more relaxed um, no one really had much of a point to prove yeah, yeah. but now they started doing mi mixing jails in it so you got like um, 18 year olds with 20 with 21 year olds and adults and stuff yeah, now yeah. so there's still the youngsters with little egos and that, trying to prove things and that. I got approached a couple of times when I was in high down. Um, I was a lump back then, innit? So no one really wanted to fight me physically. It's all like, oh, there's my man like, with their little knives. And I was like, come in here, let's have a fight then or whatever. Because I don't mind. I, yeah, enjoy, yeah. I was quite good at fighting. It depends, on the, it depends as well, you know, who you are when you go to prison. Because sometimes you go to when I'm saying, when you go to prison, there's a lot of people you're going to know there. You know, Sam, a lot of people. So it depends who you are. and. Depends who you come across. So life can be easy going into certain prison because as soon as you go there, because even when I was in prison, you know, after that time, obviously settling down, anyone that came in, I was making sure they're all right. Even if I don't know them, I was making sure you got, you got food. You got, you know, so I'm saying to you, I'm always trying to cater for people. Some prison, it could be easy. Some prison could be hard. You know, so I'm saying to you, because remember, some people don't have money. And sometimes to make a phone call, you understand, you have to wait a week Get your phone yeah, credit on. Phone credit on to do this, so the system becomes a thing like right now. People end up going to have phones and something. So people want to keep in contact with their kids. Like for me, I wanted to keep. I want to tell my son good night every night. I remember, I was being shipped out of Wandsworth. I had 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 my little my phone me and so my phone was like just bank it. So I wrapped up in clean form. I thought I'm violating myself. I can't do this, man. But do you know what I found hard in prison? You know, I was looked after, my friends looked after me with mm -hmm. money, so I always had everything. But it's when I see people with nothing in their souls, that used to hurt me. And that's one thing I'd say, when, when people do go to prison, they rely on a lot of family members and friends yeah, to yeah, send yeah. them money. And that's yeah. a lot of stress on them, yeah, you know? Yeah, because they don't know what the family's going through at the time. When I first went to prison, my mum sent me a hundred pound. And I thought my mum, I said, don't you ever in your life ever do yeah. that again. Yeah. And she's like, why well, no? I said, Mum, if you want money, I'll send you money. You know what I'm saying? Don't ever you do that again. You know what I'm saying to you? You learn to manage your money, you yeah. know? You know, like when we still like clean the wings, we used to get like £11 a week. So you put like £5 on your phone credit, you mm. probably buy a few tins of mackerel to whip up in the kettle. Like, you learn to uh, really um, live basic. That's one thing I, I appreciate about prison. I, I know how to live basic. Outside. I'm still eating tins of tuna and mackerel and that. I've still got the same diet and stuff. I actually enjoy my tuna and crackers every day. But you know what? You know what the worst thing is. There's so much talented people in prison here. You would never believe it. When I went to prison, my son was like three years old, going to be four. So, being in his life, in a son for the last three years before I went to prison, I felt I had a responsibility and something. So when that time came and I ended up in prison, it hit me to kind of realize that raw like. I grew up in a sense without my dad half of obviously my life and now my son's going through the same pattern in some sense. So yeah. what I try to do, I try to kind of do as much as I can from inside to kind of keep him on the straight and narrow path. And to this day, you understand, he's been on the straight and narrow path. And and it's good for us to be here right now to kind of speak in so people can understand where we come from, you know, something and try to steer them away from what we've obviously yeah. derailed from, you know what I'm trying to say. So, there's no winners in this crime thing. You know when people losing their lives, like being stabbed or shot, you got people losing their lives, you got people getting 30 year sentences. Yeah. There's no winners in this. Like 
it's tiring. Like I've grown up in this, it's absolutely tiring. I got a 17 year sentence for um, armed robbery. I left a two year old girl. I come out to 11 year old girl with mad attitude. And I blame, I blame myself yeah. for that a little bit. But mate, her first, see on our first visit we had, she come when she was leaving on the visit. She's like, you come home now, daddy. Imagine being stuck on a visit table, knowing yeah, yeah. you can't leave the doors yeah, yeah. and you got a two year old, beautiful little girl lie. saying, yeah, yeah. you come home now, daddy. And you have to lie. And you've got to lie. I had to hold the tears, I had to hold the lump. To this day, I get goosebumps about it. Um, you've got to realise we, affect, we, 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 we affected a lot of people going yeah, in prison. Yeah, and because you have to think of it like this here. Yeah. Even though we're doing our sentence, it's not just us that, you understand, it's a ripple effect. So our family had to go through a lot. If I could turn back time, I would, you know what I'm saying to you? Because obviously now I know who I am and I didn't know I had um, abilities or gifts or, you know what I'm saying, talent. So for me, I didn't focus on anything apart from selling drugs and that was it. As I got older, I realised I need to ask for help. If I don't know something, just ask. Yeah, yeah. That's one thing I'd say to the youngsters. If you're struggling with anything, don't be embarrassed to ask for help. Yeah, it's pride, isn't it? Remember, some people got pride and some people, you understand, know and pride is a thing that a lot of people would obviously not swallow, you know what I'm saying? Just to ask a simple question. Yeah. So I realised since I come out of jail, yeah, I used to have a good lifestyle, I used to have a nice cars, nice little chains and stuff. I've let all of that go. I come out, I drive a little focus on that now. I feel like I've got a weight off my shoulders. Like I'm not trying to impress anyone, I'm just being myself now yeah. and I'm enjoying life a whole lot yeah. more than I did when I was a kid. I was arrested for a murder and I was released without charge and went to a pub in the night time, walking back with a girl. Apparently one of my so-called mates phoned up the shooters and told them which way I was walking and that's when I got shot 27 times. 